And hello once more in 2023. This is old Buck Dave saying, how's it going out there, folks? I got you know who with me. And that would be uh, old Buck Dell. That would be old Buck Dell. If I could only talk like you, man. <laughs> you got a great radio voice. I'm I'm tired. I'm sleepy. Yeah. Well, we'll see if we can perk you up a little bit today. All right. Get you started here. Tell me I mean, something good. I mean, there's so much to talk about. It's I mean, it, it's like wow all the news and stuff would just fall in your fall in our laps here but uh hey i just want to start off with a little bit uh, we got some 2022 stats from uh, buzzsprout which is our podcast host this week now they're a little bit late because it's you know it's, it's too late for us to do a year-end summary but we already had we did that on our own and uh most of the, the uh, statistics they sent me we had already done ourselves and talked about but uh one thing i didn't know that they uh, informed us is we have listeners in 18 countries last year unbelievable 18 Mm. 18 countries 180 180 or so to go you know maybe 200 to go depending on how you count a country but uh you know, we'll have the whole world covered but we're we're 10 percent of the way there you know every every journey (laughs) begins with the first step you know that's a that's an awesome fact is to think that uh, even by chance that one person in another country, who knows what episode it was, I guess, but uh, listen to the uh, to the old bucks. It's kind of kind of awe inspiring. There, it, you know? it is. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, thank it them. Awe inspiring. And we got some. Uh, we got a couple good feedbacks on our new logo. We got some thumbs up from a couple of the bucks and vixens out there. So that was a good. That was a good decision on your part. <laughs> well, I. I uh, I had it. If, if if a good decision on my part included laughing hysterically, then then that's a, that I, <laughs> I, I, I go. But I got to give this credit to uh, you know Dave and uh, our art department uh, because you know that reminded me so much of uh, like 1964 yeah. when yeah. someone says who, what, when, or why. <laughs> well, he, he he said he did have to do a lot of airbrushing, yeah, <laughs> make I mean, us look it, presentable, but. Uh, and then I also think it's uh, we're ahead of the curve. It's a picture that represents the uh, the current state of affairs on in the world. In my view, you have you have one guy pointing at the other. It's like yeah, it's your fault. He, he did it, and, and the other guy saying, "You know, I don't I, know anything about it." I don't it, know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so there it is. That's a this is a, a, a world class photo that applies to every situation. I, Put it in I front agree, of every and, political and, uh, ad or whatever. And there you go. Tip of the antlers to my wife again. She's she's the one who picked that one out. She said, "This is you guys. This is it right here." <laughs> Am- amongst the dozen or so pictures that we took of us being goofy. I, I gotta admit that photo makes me look older than I really am. Oh, oh, you're old. No, you no, you really are that old. I really am that old. Oh, yeah, okay. you, you really look. That's the way you look. Anyhow, thanks for the thanks for the good uh, good shout outs about that. Uh, it's uh it's been fun. So uh, speaking of looking good, you you mentioned something about going to the doctor. All you know, all I know is you said I went to the doctor. I I'm, I got a complaint. <laughs> when I uh, when I passed that remark to you, it had to do with the fact that uh, the old bucks have been to many doctors many times. In this case, it's the well, the, the dentist certainly would apply, and the, and a dermatologist. And old bucks out there, they go to dermatologists at our age. So so you're going to the dermatologist, and this time it just wasn't nothing serious that I thought. I mean, I pretty much diagnosed myself from the get go. And I said, well, I'll have, I'll have an expert opinion on this thing. And it's, it's just a little rash that I can see as opposed to one that I can't see, you know, the, there's the ones that they discover. The ones that you some, can't, yeah, the oh, ones you yeah. can't see, they discover say, that you worry about because you just, you don't know. So I, thought, well, I can see this thing. And I said, oh, I wonder what that is. And so, um, anyhow, I get, uh, get my appointment in to get me in and uh, a younger doctor comes in and says, oh, that's just a little, you know, a little skin inflammation, nothing serious there. I'm going to give you a, um, an antibiotic special, kind of a special medication. Special. To, yeah, special, special okay. medication to, uh, that'll clear that up for you in a couple Does of days. Does that mean uh, expensive and not covered by Medicare? Well, we don't know. See, now <laughs> okay. we don't yeah, know. You we, don't it's know a, yet. You it's don't a, know. it's going to be a miracle cure that only she knows about. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I said, okay, so... And I mention it, it's only because now you have to go to the pharmacy. Now you have to make a special stop. They hand me this little tiny tube of cream. You know, it's not even as big as your thumb. 
Mm -hmm. And it wasn't very expensive, but I had to... Well, that's good anyway. It cost me $12 for lunch while I was waiting for it to be, you know, to pick it up, <laughs> killing some time. Otherwise, you got to come back later, you know what I mean? Uh, they don't have it there for you. Okay. So anyway, yours truly puts us all together. We get it. I look and I said, man, this looks awful familiar. And so I uh, come home and I look and I have like four tubes of this stuff that I've picked up over the years. Because you, you already have it. You yeah, you don't, need a, you don't need a lot of it. If it makes the rash go away, you still have a half a tube of it left. So this is like cortisone, something like cortisone. I, I, one I'm not even going to mention the name. I was going to, I probably can't pronounce it. But the, the fact is, if she would have told me, she said, this is what I'm going to give you. I said, well, mm -hmm. don't bother. You know, I've got a lot of that at home. And then mm -hmm. this is the killer. This is the killer, Dave. And you know, my math isn't that good. You're, that's correct. When I get this new, new prescription, it says, uh, this is a, uh, um, the quantity of the special ingredient is zero, uh, point zero two four point zero two four and okay. so the the tubes that i have at home are point one i'm thinking what in does the, that tell you yeah in the fraction range i think one <laughs> is greater than point zero there two you four. go yeah. so i said to myself i think my advice is uh, to folks is uh, ask your dermatologist or whatever to at least name the thing ahead of time and see if you don't already have a yeah. bottle of it at home all right. Well, there's your public service announcement. There's a public service of... announcement. Yeah. Just tell me the name of the stuff so I know Just what it tell is me the name what of secret it. Yeah. ingredient it is. So. Yeah. Anyhow, and we yeah. go on. And we go on. Hey, I got a, I got a quick medical story. We, we get this old guy medical stuff out of the way early here. We always have one. So I went to the, the back to the dentist <laughs> yesterday. So, I, you know, I got two, two teeth way in the back. The, uh, what do you call the wisdom tooth? And the you mean one the ones there. really out of sight back there? The ones the, that you really have to look for? The ones that are out of sight, ones that, I, ones that cracked last summer, yeah. Uh, so we finally, we finally got to those, and uh, oh, man, what an ordeal. They must have, they must have put eight ounces of painkiller in my jaw. Oh, my soul. And it wasn't enough because they had to stop and do it again because I felt like there was, you know, 220 running through me when I started drilling. But anyway, oh my, and my gosh, I couldn't eat dinner last night. My, I couldn't open my mouth. Yeah, your jaw. Yeah, my yeah jo the jaw. Uh, yeah, my jaw joint hurt so much. But was it a root canal, Dave, or they just, they just? No, nah, well, it's it just temporary crowns. You know, they're going to put crowns on. Why don't you get a permanent said, well, crown? You know, well, yeah, that's going to oh, be that's next. Right. That's this right. Is, okay, I'm sorry. They're making, they're making the crown. <laughs> they're going to make the crowns. Yeah. And he said, he said, well, you know, you might, you might need a root canal down the road anyway. So. But but uh, he said that's just something to think about. <laughs> it's like okay, there's more of my kids' inheritance. <laughs> thank you for thank going you going your way, Doc. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for warning me at least. Oh, the latest dental thing was, you know, he said uh, uh, this this didn't happen to me, but someone very close, very close to me got some dental insurance, thinking that would help, and they said, oh, you you got that low that low cost dental insurance, right? we don't take that <laughs> mm -hmm. a lot of, of people a lot of people buy the reasonably priced insurance you got to go only to specific dentists for them to use it that's another thing that drives me crazy that's uh, another scam that we're not going to talk, talk about, about dental uh, good luck to all the old bucks and old vixens and all the folks around the world that have dental issues we are yeah. completely sympathetic with your condition and you know issues there yeah. hey yeah. hey hey yeah hey hey speaking of around the world i want to i want to mention something that uh, some communication that I'm having, and I think it's going to turn out to be an old buck episode now, a couple of weeks down the road here. I've got a fella in France, uh, old buck Paul. We're on LinkedIn. Okay. We were in the same network on LinkedIn and he, he posts medical stuff from time to time that I find of interest. Anyway, he listened to our year end episode that I'd posted on LinkedIn and he said, I began to understand why I'd supported his pro Ukraine posts. I posted comments on LinkedIn earlier, you know, supporting Ukraine and telling about the Ukrainian family, and uh, or he began listening to it. Now there are, there are a couple hundred Ukrainians in their town and their little village in France. His wife uh, teaches French to them. She's a she's a teacher, and two of the students are living with them now. And uh, the the woman who organized this this whole effort, uh, you know, privately is is an American. Uh, living over there now, and uh, it's amazing what they've done to uh, to take the bull by the horns, as it were, and uh, you know, bring all these Ukrainian refugees in and 
get them housed and fed and educated and medicated. And uh, it's just an incredible story. And our, our plan is to talk about this a couple of weeks down the road here. So it's real, but it's real impressive. So I want to thank Paul and his wife for the good work they're doing and for uh, Mary who has organized all this. And so we'll, we'll be more on this later, but uh, you know, this was, this was really, really an impressive thing that they're, they're doing and they, they're doing it basically on their own. Hmm. Yeah. So basically you stumbled on a common interest. That's what it sounds to me yes. like. Yes. So we may yeah. be able to talk yeah. to these people, uh, zoom in with them or something like that. That that's the plan. That's the plan. That's what uh, Paul and I are kicking that back and forth now and see how that might best be done. But I'm, I'm hoping that then maybe in next, you know, over the next two, three weeks, we'll, uh, we'll be able to do an interview that, with, uh, with Mary and uh, Paul's wife. I think those would be the best, best candidates to start. I think, I think the old bucks would be pleased to be part of some kind of a humanitarian thing to help somebody, help somebody out. Well, I mean, I mean, frankly, we've talked about the Ukrainians in the past. And in one case, we posted charitable organizations that they could donate to. And I know that resulted in a couple thousand dollars in donations to those to those organizations. And then when we we had the uh, the the stories about the Ukrainian family that finally made Mm -hmm. it over here to St. Peter's Petersburg, uh, I know they got a couple thousand dollars in donations from people helping them get started. So well, I think we can. I think we can do it again. I would be pleased to be a part of that uh, to talk to those folks, uh, find out how that all came about, and what maybe maybe there's some something we could do to help. We'll see. I, I think so. I think so. so okay. okay, I'll stand by for more information on that. Hey, in uh, moving closer to home, but not that close to home, is is the drought over in California? <laughs> do, do they have water? What did I tell you? What did I? T- I predicted wow. this many, many moons ago. Water yeah. is going to yeah. be the key. Too much or too little. And yeah. boy, those folks are really, really getting hammered out there. Really getting hammered. But you know, I, I looked into it a little bit, and it said, uh, "While this will help, I mean, and they're talking about places that had a twelve inches of rain in a mm. day. Uh, this will help the drought, but it, it's far from fixing it. Most of it's a runoff. Yes. Unfortunately, a lot of it's just going to mm. run off. And it, it doesn't run to the right place in many cases. Uh, it's, this is like zero help for the Colorado, Colorado River Basin, which, as it turns out, supplies one third of the water supply to Southern California. So that didn't help. So, the, you know, the Southwest is still have, still going to have an, a, a water issue here for some time to come. You know, you know, Dave, I'm, I'm wondering if anybody keeps statistics. They must uh, on the number of, I mean, the tornado situation. I just saw that on the news this morning uh mm-hmm. of the i mean we know there's a lot of tornadoes i wonder like they said how many homes have actually been destroyed in the last two years by tornadoes i mean yeah. it seems like it seems like it's coming from the other the other coast i mean the the west coast but it it blows in with water and then turns to snow and then turns to some kind of other uh, storm you know tornado issues in the middle yeah. countries i mean you know there are still people that deny that that the climate change is real. I saw that in the paper too the other day. I guess I guess they've been hiding under the bed for several years now. I don't know. Well, what to it's going to be. It could be the new normal. Uh, yeah. Hey, to, to bring this whole thing to a more personal mm-hmm. level. Of course, my my son is out there in Southern California. He sent me some pictures. He he began building a, a levee around the building where he lives. Okay. <laughs> And, I thought uh, it was dry where he lived. I thought it was kind of parched. Uh, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> not right now. So he said eight, eight other guys came out and, and helped him. So they, they kind of built this little, uh, these pictures of this little little dam that they built around the perimeter of the, uh, the maybe, building. Maybe, so maybe was, 24 inches high or something like that you're talking? Uh, not not even that high, but high enough to uh, high enough to make a difference, I guess. And then he had he had a drive to Modesto, okay, which is east of San Francisco. Pretty, pretty good drive. He said, you know, I'm going to leave a day early just in case because of all this. So it turns out he had to drag a tree off the road. There was a tree blocking the road early in his journey, so he had to do that. Sent me some pictures there, and and just cars underwater. It was just amazing. And then, uh, you know, he made it to Modesto. Had his had his meeting there. And on the way home, 
he hit a pothole in the freeway where the water had washed out parts of the freeway that you couldn't see it obviously because it was yeah right yeah mm -hmm. was, yeah B blew two tires oh. he needed an 80 mile tow had to stay in a motel that night uh near the near the garage where it was going to get the tires were going to get expensive replaced. trip expensive trip at uh, at 5 a.m the fire alarm went off in the hotel. Oh. <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't get to, into the hotel after midnight and then he had kind of a tough tough day a tough night and then it got even tougher when he got the bill for the two tires. But yes. Well, I mean, having having met your son, uh, I know you can't be making this up. <laughs> no, not making yeah, this up. He's yeah. had, the boy will have some memories uh, when he's an old buck oh, sitting yeah. on the porch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all the best to him. Yeah. I hope he all the best. Yeah, to him. gets yeah. through that. Yeah, he's going to be okay. You know, it was something I I, I wanted to. Uh, uh, give a, sh a shout out, or perhaps, you know, maybe someone will forward, forward uh, an old buck episode to uh, Eric Garland. You know who he is? Eric Garland? Merrick? You mean Merrick? Is it Garland? Merrick? Merrick? I thought it was Eric. Oh, it's Merrick. Merrick. You mean the, the AG? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Attorney General. That's exactly. We'll call him the Attorney General. The Attorney General of the United States of America. I have some advice for him. Um, because, uh, uh, -oh, wait a minute. Okay. I mean, normally okay, I charge 25 sure. cents for second opinions, but, uh, this case, I'll just, this, is, this will be this free, will advice. free advice. He should, he should stand okay. up. Okay. Merrick, listen yeah, up. Everybody. He should stand. He should simply stand up at the podium and say the justice department will prosecute to the full extent of the law, any past, present or future president who abuses classified documents. And should they be convicted of a felony, no one should be permitted to take or hold public office again. Amen. I think that's what he should say. And that'll put a, that'll put end to this constant news stream because everybody will be in the same same group. I don't know what you'd call them. I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is, okay, this is your advice. Your advice to the AG. That's my advice I'm, to the I'm AG. Back. I mean... I'm moving away from the mic here, but uh, it's kind of. It's I think, not a I bad think it's idea. solid advice. Just, just make an announcement that uh, you know, we will, we will let the, uh, let the lady justice, the scales of justice, shall, shall even themselves mm -hmm. out, and uh, any past, present, or future president, or maybe you could even say, you know, member of the house or anybody like that that, that abuses. That kind of scares me, by the way. That secret document stuff. I mean. I have some experiences in that, and basically, you just don't treat that stuff lightly. I don't know how that ever happened. So, best of luck to him. See if they take my advice. See what happens. See what happens. Have you seen the latest thing on uh, UFOs? I did. I did. I think they clarified that. Did you not? Did you see that uh, the, they showed the same old pictures? You know, the little fuzzy black dot and that kind of thing. Yeah. So the UFO is. Well, they've identified it as <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump's hairpiece, or what? It's not wouldn't would not that simple. The uh, they're they're never. A, you notice there's never a clear photo of these UFOs. You know what I mean, Dave? Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, yeah. the 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 image that we want to see, I mean, has been created by Hollywood, right? The, right. It's yeah. the the uh, uh, the day the Earth stood still. Uh, or something, you know, those flying saucer kind of things, or these uh, uh, ships that have to have uh, some kind of maybe airfoils too. I don't know. They're all. I all think they're all human uh, created. Otherwise, the photos are very, very vague. Uh, just a black spot or a, a bright flashing light that's moving quickly. I mean, when I see black spots in the sky that I can't identify, I know that they're just floaters in my eye. Oh, yeah. Just, just, that flock of birds going over. Yeah. It isn't really a yeah. flock of birds. It's just, it's, it's, it really a my, bird? <laughs> just another floater. Yeah. So, and, and mm -hmm. to think too that that uh, to that aliens would somehow uh, choose to uh, present themselves in that, you know, in that format. I don't know. I just think, I'm, I just they, you can come up with all kinds of scenarios, but I just don't see them doing that. You know what I mean? And then of course you have like yeah. uh, the movie that. Uh, where the ship is uh, huge, you know, and they can, uh, like Independence Day. Remember that movie? I do remember. Yeah, so, that I mean, movie, that's yeah. a, just a different take on the same thing. Mm -hmm. a, a clever alien would probably best, uh, if he wanted to spy on us, would uh, send something down about the size of a, a normal house fly. 
That would be my that would be my guess. A uh-huh. little normal house flies, perfectly designed. Uh, you know, got eye plenty of eye uh, space and got wings, move around, can land upside down, can do all kind of miraculous things. So he would uh, design a little ship that big, and he would be able to see what was going on here and never be noticed at all. So if you and house flies generally the real ones use their front, you know, their front legs to kind of wipe their eyes. You ever see him do that? I do the same thing. Well, yeah. if you see one that can't move his front legs over his eyes, <laughs> it's an probably alien. a miniature alien <laughs> spaceship that uh, that yeah. is here observing Earth and deciding just to be incognito. So I'm debunking this whole UFO thing. I'm thinking it's just okay. So the whole alien just, transport vehicle thing it, is it's in my it's a, it's in my imagination. It, somebody somewhere. created it, and we're only. You know, where Hollywood put that in our head, yeah. or it's just a little okay. bird dropping on the window screen or something that they see. So I don't know. Yeah. So forget it. Hey, speak- yeah. Okay. Hey, speaking of bird droppings, <laughs> <laughs> did you did you see that Prince Harry's new book is out? Spare. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the segue. Uh, it just came to me here. I, I got to grab him when I you can. Fu- are, did you pick that up? And you didn't pick that up. No, I am not going to spend a nickel on that book. I, I just I think I've kind of made my my position on the whole royal family thing uh, known in the past. Uh, I was listening to John Stewart's podcast, and he echoed my position exactly. I'm not, I'm not going to say everything he said, but he said, I don't give a blank about any of this. <laughs> the royal family is a vestigial tale of a colonial past that makes no sense to me. I'm tired of it, tired of it, tired of it. And he said a lot more, but you get the mm-hmm. idea. You know? like, John, I'm 100% with you. It's like, well, uh, if, yeah, these, these, this, is a, this is a severely dysfunctional family, and why don't you just keep it to let yourself? Them, let folks. them go. Hey, if you if you have a you know if you're listening to John's uh, John John Stewart's podcast, I I definitely think you ought to make contact with him because I I truly hope that he is a nominee for president of the United States. I mean, I I, I just think he'd make a great debater. <laughs> <laughs> if you're John, if you're listening, if you're listening, go for it. Sign up, buddy. Declare now. People have asked him. People have asked him. He said, no, this is what I do. This is what I do. But uh, you're right. I have no other further comments on uh, on those guys. Uh, they have issues, and uh, they need to uh, just get a regular job and carry on. It's kind of sad. The whole thing is kind of mm. sad. All those pomp and circumstances and all those little gold braids and way, funny hats and everything. Oh, my soul. Way too much inbreeding. Anyway, so what else have you been doing? I I tried to get hold of you yesterday. And said, ah, I'm sorry, I mean, I'm I'm going fishing. You know, what was that all I, hey, about? Dave, what was that all about? I'll tell you, that was a it's an interesting fishing trip. But I I've got to say that folks who have a hobby, and you have a hobby, your hobby is riding. I would say that I could safely say that you like bicycles. You know about bicycles. That's yeah, that's that's my number one avocation. Yeah. Passion. So you you like, and you you have the right bicycle stuff. You got the right bicycle gloves and hat and helmet and you know so that all the good have, stuff everything yeah. that make it pleasurable and safe and so on and so forth so people that embrace a sport where they they really have everything they need to make it work i admire that well imagine boating boating and the fishing going out into way out of sight of land someplace in a 25 26 foot boat you better have all the right stuff. You better know what you better you're doing. know what you're doing. Yeah. So this gentleman, um, after talking to him for quite some time, said, "Okay." He said, "I'm I'm going to go. I'm going to take my boat out. Do you want to come along?" And I said, "Sure." You know, who doesn't want to turn on a boat trip? You know. Yeah, Gulf of Mexico, yeah. baby. Uh, which is pretty big water body when you get out far enough. It's from pretty land. big. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty big. You, so I said, "I'll do this," and I'm I'm totally amazed at what he has to have to be basically safe. The, the it's satellite mm-hmm. navigation things. There's uh, there's safety devices. There's, there's a special kind of anchoring gear. There is. And the, the thing that got me the most is a, uh, he called it a trolling motor, but what it is, it's a, it's a positioning motor. That's the satellite mm-hmm. driven. Okay. It keeps the orientation. It, it just keeps, it keeps the boat, in a, I would say in a small circle, you know what I mean? 
I, I didn't see it to be stationary. Oh, so when so when you're fishing, so yeah. you're, you're trolling in a small yeah, circle. Yeah, you're sort of okay. in the same spot. So the, the, it, it may uh, maybe so it moves it forward keep, a little bit to the left, but it holds. It sort there, of it keeps like you, looks, yeah, and and over the area that you want to you want to fish in, yeah. because you of course have okay. a fish finder, right, and all the little little dots on your screen. So I was like mesmerized by all this stuff, but it it is a serious endeavor. Uh, and have great respect for any anything bigger than a rowboat to to maintain all that stuff and to you know to be able to do that safely. So the man truly loves his uh, his boating activity. He understands it. He he doesn't fear the big four foot waves or whatever that kind of thing. I was thinking, my, I, I, I'm I'm just not aware of all the technology that's available in these different sports. Yeah. And every sport has it too. The technology is just leaps and bounds on everything you do uh whether it's golf or something there's always some new you can you can go down that rabbit hole as far as, far as, as you, you want to go there's there's as there's far as you so, want. yeah i was fishing yeah. and we did catch uh did catch a few fish some nice sized fish what kind of fish? well there were some group kind of fish caught, but get? they were too small and you Ooh. have to be have to be over oh. 20 inches that's a pretty good size 20 inches mm -hmm. so what did you bring home uh i brought home some vermilion snapper oh. and they are the, so that's so that's similar to red snapper it, it is similar just a different color no it's also it got, got that pink more pink flam hue. flamboyant mm. <laughs> <laughs> no okay. vermilion is not fish. quite red red but it's uh but yeah. it has a, a very nice looking fish and it's and if it's over uh, 11 inches or 12 inches it's a has a great fillet on it and uh i just kept a couple of them i never take more than uh never keep more than i would eat in one sitting because mm -hmm. what goods that do it just okay. gets in the back of your freezer with the other tupperware but all in all <laughs> yeah. it was a fun day and that's why you couldn't call me oh, i was great. out of phone reach and i came back i had a number of messages and i said ah it can all wait i had a great time it was fun but i'll tell you you talk that's about right. tired at my age balancing on that boat and oh yeah that's good and, be a, and, take and i time. learned the hard way i was stepping from the uh, pier to the boat to the edge of the boat and I was yeah. going to step to the floor of the boat. Mm -hmm. That's like a 22 inch step. That's and I step. almost, I almost went right, you know, right over. I, it, so, I looked down and I didn't judge the distance. So I was just going to step there, boy, by the time my leg hit, you know, I was already tilted at 60 degrees. <laughs> I said, Oh boy, don't even get away from I'm untied from yourself. the dock and already I'm, I'm going to kill myself. So at the end of the day, hence we were able to have a podcast. Yeah. Right? Thank, thankfully you saved the day. I'd thankfully. be sitting in a cast yeah. or something, but uh, to all the fishermen out there, uh, they might run across the, all the best to you. Stay safe and, uh, you know, keep the latest gear, I guess. It was pretty cool. Had fun. Hey, well, listen, you know, there's so, there's so much news. We, it's hard to, it's hard to pick what we want to talk about mm. really. So, you know, we've decided we're not going to talk about Kevin McCarthy. And those characters, right? Yeah. Uh, I think they got professional guys out there, pundits that that labor that yeah, subject well, that, to death. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but we do have uh, on a serious note here. Uh, we've got a really special episode next week that we want to give everybody a heads up for. We are be, in my view, honored to have Bridie Heidel, an author, uh, read her story. Her story is uh, it's called "We Owned the Night." And it was published this month in Mother Magazine. And it's part of her memoir, her, her book, which uh, she just finished. It's called, the book is called Bright Eyes. Uh, and it's about growing up in an, really in an extremely dysfunctional household and, and surviving the whole thing. And it's pretty tough stuff. It's, it's gritty, but it's real. And it's her story. And uh, so we, we're looking forward to next week, and we hope everybody will tune in and uh, listen listen to her story so we're going to talk to bridie a little bit about herself before and then she's going to actually read the the uh, short story it's a memoir actually it's nonfiction, and then we're going to chat about it uh, afterwards so uh, we're going to chat with her about it first. we're going to chat with her about mm -hmm. it yeah and uh, so i'm really looking forward and it's to not that. a long story is it Dave? it's just it's a short it's a short excerpt from the book Maybe what, but 10 minutes, it's, it's, seven minutes? Yeah, it's, it's under, under 10 minutes. Okay. But it's, uh, it's very powerful, very strong, and it's, and, it's, and it's all real. Every word of it's real. So 
you know, some of us, some of us grew up in, in great families, some of us didn't. And uh, this, so this is something that a lot of people will be able to identify with. And so she's, uh, she's an author. And uh, she is an how author. did you happen? How did, how did you happen to actually even read her the first thing she ever wrote? I mean, how did you even know she existed? Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, we'll talk about that next week. But I can say that a couple of years ago, I think it was 2018, uh, we went out to uh, spend a month in Lake Tahoe area. Mm -hmm. And I, so I, I found that there was a local writers group there and I attended a couple of their sessions. And uh, as a result of that, I got put on their distribution list mm -hmm. okay. where they, every, for every meeting, they, they post the stories that are going to be uh, discussed at the next meeting, which I think, which is really nice. It's really, really a great group. It's really a, really an excellent writing group and uh in a year or so ago i you know i take a look at the stories every week and sometimes i send a comment in i read this story that she wrote it was a, a draft story and it just blew me away it was like wow this is so powerful and it's uh, so well written and uh i eventually i tracked her down and complimented her on the story and uh you know, thanks. And then kind of that was that. And then uh, in the email that just went out for the last, uh, for the upcoming meeting, they had posted that, a, a link to uh, her story, one of her stories getting so published. So that, that was the connection there. Uh, and that's the, so I kind of reconnected with her and said, hey, you, you got to read this to our, to our <laughs> listeners. This is such a, this is such a powerful well, story. Well, I, I did, uh, I did look at that. And uh, I know the old bucks, uh, uh, would uh, would like to support a uh, up and coming writer. In fact, it's a real honor, uh, and I know how much you appreciate uh, good writing and uh, trying to write and how difficult that can be. So, I look forward to being part of that, uh, and that's going to be uh, next week. And then you'll release that sometime. Uh, well, probably next Friday or something. Next week, yeah. Hope hopefully next Friday, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, I'm all, all right, I'm so all on board for that, and. Uh, Keep us abreast on the uh, French Connection. <laughs> Pardon oh, yeah, the pun. I'll, the I'll wear my Popeye Doyle hat for that. Uh, yeah, we got some interesting stuff coming up here. So we're looking yeah. forward to getting feedback from our listeners and uh, tell your friends about it. Always looking for new listeners, right. folks. So this is this is uh, basically old Buckdale survived fishing. A dermatologist. <laughs> you survived the dentist and other... Another adventurous uh, week for us, and uh, I would like to say thank everybody for listening. Uh, there's one or two people that maybe just turned in one time. Uh, thank you. Okay. This is Old Buck Dell saying, uh, talk to you next time. All right. And if you're basically Old Buck Dale, I must be Old Buck Dave. He would be Old Buck Dave. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Take care. See everybody. Look forward to next week, everybody. Bye bye. I think you can make something out of that. That's...